Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, you are tuned in to the Vitamin D with Dawn Day podcast. And if you haven't guessed it, I'm your host, Dawn Day. I'm here to get you excited about your life so that you can live life on purpose and for a purpose. And if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Vitamin D, it's a pun of my name. You know, my name is Dawn, which means the sun. So I am here to shed light into your life. You know, you get vitamin D from the sun, right? All right, cool. And I do this with inspirational insights and conversations with celebrities and everyday people like you and me. Also, I want to be clear. When we talk about vitamin D, uh, we're shedding light on the good and the bad. Yes, we're all about inspiring and we're all about motivating. But in order to be better and to do better, you have to have the ability to see better. And that's the good and the not so good. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm shining bright like a diamond. Catch it. (laughs) So that's what vitamin D is about. Um, It's also a dream of mine. A dream that came to me when I lived in New York over a decade ago. Recording this podcast underneath my comforter, child sweating, using a USB mic, but don't tell me I'm not possible. Shoot, I am possible. I am possible, and so are you. And that's what I want people to realize. Um, I want you to know that because there's no reason why we all shouldn't be living our best lives, you know? And on this podcast, I also want to tell you, too, that when talking about you are your greatest asset, it's all about the deposits and liabilities. Just like any account, you know what you put in, you know what you take out. But the most important uh, fact about it is the balance. And that's kind of like what we call like the constants in life, right? And I just want to make sure that everyone can receive that, okay? So... I got some topics for discussing on this episode. So without further ado, it is time for your dose of vitamin D. Get your vitamin D right here with me and get excited about your life. Hey, y'all. Um, I was looking at the news and I came across some things I wanted to shed some light on. Um, I don't know if you had heard, but Apple, yes, the major company Apple has announced that they will be moving forward with a hybrid work model. Yeah. Uh, The CEO, Tim Cook, he sent out an email telling employees that the company was rolling out a new work model that will require them to return to in-office work on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays starting this fall. Yeah, in September. And guess what? Folks are really not feeling it. Um, A lot of people have been noting that without the inclusivity that flexibility brings, many of us feel we have to choose between either a combination of our families, our well-being, and being empowered to do our best or being a part of Apple. Okay, I was on the the flip side a bit about this. Do you work from home? How is your remote working life? I did it before I released my job. I was working from home before it became a thing. And that's because I was mainly doing digital stuff. And I'll say this, I did enjoy that. But being a social person, I do think there is a advantage point with being in touching base with people just for life, just for communication, just for self and well-being, just for the idea of someone to lay eyes on you. And um, being that a lot of the workers here at Apple are just like, no, ma'am. But Tim Cook and a lot of other people within the company says that it's essential to the the culture and the future of the company because a lot of these amazing products that we're using at our fingertips were developed when people were together. And it's like, it's interesting with technology and how it's progressing. As much as we're being connected, I feel that we're so far uh, being disconnected. Does that make sense? Like as many access points that we have with so many tech, so much technology, I feel like the farther we are away from each other. And that's why I have to stand that I'm, I'm actually for a check-in. Like I get it. You know, you're saving time for being in there with traffic. You're probably saving time because maybe you're not even living in the city that you uh, work in or where your job was initially at. I know a lot of people, me living in Los Angeles, California, Man, I heard so many people out here talking about something. They didn't move out to Texas. They didn't move to Nevada. Just something where they can get a better quality of life. So on that part, I don't blame it. But I do think we have to to, to connect with one each other, one another. We have to get in the mode of getting out the house. And here is another thing. While a lot of people are for the remote because they're like, I can go with the flexibility. I can go vacate where I want to vacate. Oh. I feel like you lose on that 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 work life balance. 
Because you never have an idea of when work is going to start and when it's going to finish. You are always on the clock because you're always accessible. Because if you're not out at work, you're at home. And if you're at home, guess what? You can work. And if you're on vacation and you have your computer and you have Wi-Fi, you can work. Um, but it ain't nothing like being able to get up and go to the store. Go work out real quick. So... I think I, I, I'm i still for it because why can't you check in one or two days? Now, what Apple did say that they will be offering um, fully remote positions, but they will be extremely limited. Um, they also said that we believe that in-person collaboration is essential. What do you think? I guess it would be like being in a relationship and married and not seeing your partner every day. And I also had to take this in consideration. I'm a single woman. I don't have children. So I don't have, when I'm not at home, I don't have beings that will require my attention. So the whole the whole idea of going into the office maybe one or two days, I can see how that's appeasing. Now, let's be clear. With my lifestyle and my dreams of pursuing my voiceovers, we're going to the speaking, doing the podcast, I'm not really made for the nine to five in the office type of lifestyle. Let's just be clear. But if I were that girl... OK, where I don't have to go on spontaneous um, auditions and productions and doing game shows and TV shows. Perhaps that would work. So I do think you should relate a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And have some time to cut off because like, really, when do people cut off? I just thought this article was just so interesting because people are complaining. You know? And it's like they're deciding on whether or not they're going to stay at a company or, or leave. And I get it. Like the prices out here are ridiculous. And it seems at some point you have to stop or something has to hold down. But don't lose connection with the people. You know, what do you think? Do you work remotely? Are you forward? Against it? Why? Let me know. So Apple's not baking down. So I'm wondering what's going to happen with these other companies. I know some companies have actually shut down their offices and everything's being done remotely. But um, if Apple, you know, a major company is leading the way, I can't only imagine how many other companies are going to follow suit. And just like how you do a company meeting, there should be a touch base. Because if you're creating a product, you got to get familiar with the other hands that got the hands on the product. So I feel, so I think. But I guess it does just depend on uh, what the job role you're doing because, again, I had a job that was remotely. Okay, so that's what's going to ha happen with Apple. So I just want to give you a bite of news. Get it? <laughs> All right, I'm moving on. Wait, what, Elijah, are you confused? An apple, you take a bite out of an apple. Okay. Elijah was looking like and rolled up his eyes like, you better be laughing at my joke because my joke was funny. <laughs> at least I thought it was funny. Hey. Anyway. I'm moving on to something else. Did you see uh, the Amazon Prime project with Mary J. Blige? My life. Oh, did you like it? What did you think? I thought it was great. Um, you know, we look at Mary J. Blige as an artist that has constantly just going through something. But now that after watching that um, documentary, and probably I realized it without really realizing it, how inspirational her albums were and are, and how beautiful it is that she was coming with her truth. First off, let me just give a sidebar. Years later, not on the albums that they were highlighting, but um, I forget which album it was, but that track, Just Fine, when I like, when I see, when I'm looking at me, when I'm walking past the mirror. When I was in college, that was on bump. But this was talking about my life and just the things that um, her hit songs. If you look into my eyes and see what I see, uh, I appreciate it. And I think it's in such great reviews of just how transparent Mary was. She was just coming out with everything that she had been through, whether she had been molested, you know, growing up without a father, being a victim of abusive relationships. And you really saw something that I think a lot of people ought to do more often is just that self-reflection. Like really being able to see yourself and it's beautiful when you can create art and seeing how you grow from your art. And also, this is something that I thought was so great about her um, documentary as well. And I feel like it goes with a lot of people. Like if you have a dream, when you understand how your dream really feeds you, 
And it's kind of like that whole thing with the Bible scripture, how you got to honor your neighbors, how you honor yourself. So when you honor in your dream, you realize how we can be a gift when you present it to other people. And in her music, she was just talking about how the whole motive of all that was healing herself. And I guess I can just, you know, I related so much because she was shedding light on her issues. Hello, vitamin D, shedding light on things. But then also about what it means to be unapologetically who you are in your truth. And how her truth has inspired so many people's lives. How her truth has allowed herself to see herself. It was at one point, she was up there uh, looking at this interview that she did with this lady because based on her, her growing up, you know, smiling in the neighborhood wasn't it. You know, you just didn't smile. She was like, for many times in her teenage years, she did not smile. And she was looking at herself in this interview with this lady and she's like, nah, you wouldn't understand. She was like, I'm looking at it, little Mary right now. I can tell I didn't like her. I didn't like her because I felt like she was judging me. I didn't like her because I felt as though she wouldn't understand me. And it's so interesting that when you come from a space of allowing yourself to see yourself, what you will exactly see. If you look in my eyes and see what I see, what happens when you're looking at the mirror? What do you see? So that's why I think Mary was going with this. And you know, I heard like a lot of people make comments. It's like, it was kind of like a reminiscent about what the music and what it meant to really feel the music and how you can really feel your music. And she said something that stood out. She was talking about how um, my life, that album, that album was an album to save herself, but it was more so of how she had to shower herself with love. And how she said that was that album that was so transformational in her life because it was like she was calling herself out on her mess. Nobody wants to be around stuff that stinks. And if you don't like what stinks, clean it up. And I think that's what we got to do with a lot of grace in our lives to clean it up. And it was so great, too, because seeing how like a rose that actually grew from the concrete. Like I think she said slow bomb. I could be mispronouncing it, but the projects that she's grew up in. And seeing how she saw more, she had this vision. And it's like, that's why I ask people, what's the vision of your life? That's why I even said the quote with um, Raphael Gordon. He was somebody that I met back in New York. He was actually one of the, um, one speaker that I saw was doing his own thing and making it happen. But he would always say that your location is not your destination. Meaning where you are right now does not project where you are going to be. Because had you asked Mary, she would have still been up in the, um, in the projects. But, you know, she always said she had the vision that she had just see her mama dancing and singing in front of that TV. And she said, I want to be strong like my mama. I want to be like my mama. Even though she had moments where she seen her mama go through trials and tribulations, she still had a vision for more. And I guess that's the beauty of it. And it's loving yourself out of your pain. It does not mean that the pain doesn't exist. Hell, if you look at anything that's growing, take a seed, for example, right? Whether it's acorn, whether it's a sunflower seed, whether it's whatever vegetable seed, it was contained in this little capsule. Let's just say it was a capsule. And, you know, you throw it on in some dirt, you put some shit on it, literally, and water it. And it's like this process of things are breaking and cracking through and then it's bearing fruit. And it's like Mary has bared fruit that me, you, your auntie, your uncle, your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your brother, your sister are still eating from. And it's simply because she decided to love herself. My life, my life, my life, my life. What's your life looking like, sis? What's your life looking like, bruh? I don't know. I just wanted to make sure that you go ahead and watch it. No, they didn't give me any money for it. Maybe next time they will, but check it out and understand what it really means to love on yourself. Man, she was just talking about how that taught behavior of just being in those abusive relationships and how you literally attract that. But it's that moment when you take down and do the work. And Mary was talking about how she was doing the work. So I'm wondering, um, what is the work are you doing on yourself? Could you be as bold as Mary to come forward with your truth and what's hurting you? Now, I, she didn't really go through the specifics, but honestly, she didn't even have to. Because you just knew. You know, because you know what you feel when you hear her music. And they say you know the truth by the way it feels. And DRE said that. So I like that. I think it's it's something that, you know, a lot of people need to see. A lot of people that feel encouraged, that have been abused relationships, that have been molested, um, that have been 
in a room where the lights were off and they didn't even know it was off. But see, Mary's light, that was her voice. I don't know what your light is. Can you draw? Like, do you dance? Can you build things? Find your light and then just keep walking in that. That light is whatever that gift is, whatever that thing that comes easy with you. You deserve that. You know what I'm saying? I think you deserve to take a chance on yourself. And that's why I had to highlight this because it was Mary's love for herself that transcended her out of her circumstances, that transcended her out of her situations, that transcended her in a life that she can only imagine. And here's the kicker. This is not a spoiler alert um, because they were announcing it on social media, her talking about it is that she didn't even realize all of what she was doing for people and for herself because of how dark the room that she's in. You understand what I'm saying? Like, this life is only finite. It's going to go like this. How long are you going to stay in the room with the lights off? Hmm? And you know, sometimes like you can be in a room with the lights off and not even know that they're off. But you know what a key indicator is? You feeling like you want more? Feeling like there's something else? Yeah. You in the room with the lights off. And it's amazing. All it takes is courage to step forward to go, cut it on. And there's the thing, just like how Mary cut on her light, it was with her music and singing through her pain, fighting her way out of it. You're going to cut on the light and you're going to see some things that you don't like. But what is fear? Fear is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Well, if I got the lights on, I can see. Well, there ain't no appearance. It is what it is. I know how to move. It's like they say that, um, learn how to play chess. That's how you should move in your life. Make your next move your best move. And what that's going to cost for you to do is see. See what's all around you. You may not understand all of it, but if you can see it, you can recognize it. And if it doesn't feel right, it's not for you. If it doesn't rock with the vibe. So shout out to Mary. I, I, I want to be more bold than that. I want to be more bold and challenging my truth and things that I'm going through just to heal me. Not because, oh, I want to put all of Dawn's business on blast. No, because I want to be better and do better and stuff. And I want to be my most authentic self. Dog. Yeah, it's like the world is waiting on you, Dawn. The world is waiting on you. And if you're going to keep sitting here being ashamed, trying to hide, trying to wait for somebody else's permission, oh my gosh, you could be waiting until you get into the grave. Don't act like that's not uncommon. They say some of the richest places in the world is the cemetery. You know how many people didn't die with their dreams? You know how, many people, how the Marys that were out there that had a song that they chose not to sing? You know how many of the Misty Copelands were out there that chose not to dance? Stop playing with me. You know how many Usain Bolts out there were chose not to run? Shakari Richardson? Michael Phelps? Richard Pryors? Beyonce? Oprah? Queen Latifah? Dawn Day? Stop playing with me. <laughs> Stop playing with yourself. Go get your life. Claim it. It's yours for the asking. Clark sisters told you that. So what's up? What T.I. say? He say, pussy in, stand up, or lay down. So what you gonna stand up or lay down in your life? Well, you know, if you lay down, anybody can walk over you. But if you stand up, you can walk over anything. Catch it. All right, this next thing I want you to catch too. I was seeing on social media. Did you see that picture that Monique had posted up um, with the woman with the bonnet? She like she was at the airport. Dog. Now, let's just be clear. If it ain't about what we're doing or what we look like, black women are consistently being criticized for what they're wearing on the head, what they're wearing on their body, for how they talk, how they walk, how they dress, whatever. And it was so interesting that Monique was just calling out this girl saying like, hey, you know, as young people, we need to care more about what we have on and what we look like. And I'm not going to front. When I initially looked at the picture and I saw the girl, I said, I understand everything that Monique was saying. I mean, we do have to be mindful of how we walk out the house. Now, I'm not going to lie. I have came out the house looking like who did it, what for, and why, going to make a run to the store. But one thing that Monique did say is that you have to walk and be understanding that you are a representation of everyone that came before you and everything that you are associated with. 
and hold yourself with pride. And I think there are sometimes there are people out there that may not care. But what I really think that we really need to be having a conversation about what is going on inside, because when you have to the point and I say when not like it's a final thing, but when it comes to an instance of when you may not be showing or showing up as your best self. It's time to do a check in. You got to show up as your best self. You know, oftentimes what people see is what how you introduce yourself before you open up your mouth. Now, I know myself and I'm going to just brag on myself a little bit. I think my energy introduces me. But oftentimes if you saw me from a distance or someone else, you can not necessarily feel on my energy. But I say all that to say because looking further, she got this dress on. She's at the airport. The dress is beyond her behind so that you see her what looks like underwear or whatever her undergarments are being shown. But it's like, who went up to sis to say, how you doing? What were her friends at? Where were her cousin? What was her man? Who was there that was looking after her as a homegirl, as a friend, as a family member to say, hey, what's going on? A girl don't be walking out the house like that. So rather than showing up with care and consideration, we just coming up with so much judgment. Don't know what it was to be judged. When you love on yourself and when you care on yourself, you walk like it and you talk like it. You know, it's an awful thing not feeling comfortable about what you're putting on and not wanting to go to the store. And therefore, you're like, oh, I'm just going to run in real quick. I'm just going to slip on something on and real quick. Don't take a picture. Don't do that. No, you got to show up for your best self every day of your life because tomorrow ain't promised. And sometimes we get so caught up in waiting for the day rather than it just being the day. Now, I'm not going to say glitz and glam from head to toe, but yeah, you come with yourself presentable, not funky. I'm not saying that she was funky. I'm just saying in general. And dressed Accordingly, as if someone to take a picture and it's okay. Dress accordingly that if somebody put the camera on you for everyone to see that you okay. Show up as you are. And now on another thing, I do want to side point is that you can imagine what it's like in high school. And somebody puts you on blast for the room. And that's how I grew up. We didn't have no social media then. So I wasn't about to pop up somewhere and see pictures. You might see a picture up in a locker or somewhere. I don't know. But I cannot imagine a celebrity with millions of followers post a picture of me on their social media account and I say in a way of bashing what I have on, I would be mortified, humiliated. But on one end, somebody was like, well, you chose to walk out the house that way. But again, you don't know what somebody else is going through. And I think that's the most important thing we need to highlight here. And there's so many other people because whether somebody said it intentionally, nobody doesn't, nobody wants to go outside not looking their best self. Let's just be honest. And I think just this woman, you know, she got caught off in a situation at what some people may say a hot ass mess, you know, but nobody asked what was going on or how she was feeling, what her day was like. Nobody knows what it's like to walk in her shoes, yet everybody trying to dictate what shoes she's wearing. Catch it. So I want to say that I hope we do better, not only with loving ourselves and showing up as ourselves, but also taking care of each other as ourselves. We are our sister and our brother's keeper. So let's act like it. All right, that was done for the little topics for today. (laughs) I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I also want to encourage you that if you enjoyed this episode and you're enjoying this podcast, make sure you tell your friends to tell their friends about it, okay? Just like, share, and subscribe. We're getting this followers up. We're getting the social media up. We're doing all this so we can make this money. Because vitamin D got to go around the world, baby. Vitamin D in the house, baby. Yeah. Also, um, I don't know if you know, but you know, I also do advice letters too, right? If you need some advice about anything, your love, relationships, um, career, I don't know. Whatever you can think about, you need some advice on, I want you to email me. Vitamin D at DawnDaySpeaks.com. But let's be clear here. I'm going to keep it real with you. Because I want you to be your best self. So I'm not sugarcoating nothing because when it was too sweet, it can rot in your mouth. Huh. We're not doing that over here. So go ahead and email. I just may read it on the air. And then also, I want to make sure that you check out our um, YouTube account. Have you checked out the interviews and stuff we've been highlighting? I know. Where have you been? Go over there and check it out. Um, We got special features coming up on the podcast. Coming up five days a week. So what you got? Your your main check-ins, the interviews. We got some affirmations. And we got some quick doses. And who knows? <laughs> We're going to have more soon. I'm going to be up on here with some live performances with some of your favorite artists. It's going to be popping. Yes. Oh. 
That's the vision. And that's why you know I always ask you, what's the vision for your life? What do you see? I don't want you to be sitting in this podcast and I'm the only one that's growing. That's not how this goes. That's not, that's not, that's not a fair relationship and I'm not going to subscribe to that. I'm not subscribing to that. Because we in this together. Well, you see in this real time, you're listening to this real time. You are witnessing me become one of the biggest muggles in the world. Yeah, I said it. Don't believe me? Just watch. Oh, we can do it together. What say you? All right. So I want to make sure that you keep up with me. Make sure you follow me on all social media at Dawn Day Speaks. And until next time, you know what it is. Always remember, you are your greatest asset.